How to stockpile food that never expires when the world has ended, supply chains are ghost stories, and your last can of beans is looking at you like a final prayer. The supermarkets are graveyards, the delivery trucks rust sculptures, your neighbors are eyeing your garden like vultures, and that expiration date on your canned peaches just became a cruel joke from the old world. But here's the thing about survival. It's not about hope. It's about science, spite, and foods so stubborn they'll outlive cockroaches. No worries, we're building an immortal pantry. Listen up, Wasteland Warriors. I've got foods that laugh at expiration dates, mock time itself, and will keep you alive when everything else is given up. These aren't your grandmother's preserves. These are the undead of the food world. Scientifically engineered by accident, perfected by desperation. Start with the holy trinity of screw you entropy, salt, sugar, and honey. Find them in abandoned restaurants, raided pantries, or that weird neighbor's bunker you definitely didn't break into. Salt first. This crystalline miracle doesn't just season your rat stew, it's a bacterial serial killer. Sodium chloride creates a molecular wasteland where microbes go to die. It sucks moisture out of everything like a chemical vampire. Stored in anything airtight, mason jars, plastic containers, that fancy Tupperware from before society collapsed. Keep it dry, keep it sealed, and it'll outlast your great-grandchildren's skeletons. Sugar's next, pure white death to bacteria. It binds water molecules tighter than a miser's fist, creating a desert where nothing can grow. Sure, it might turn into concrete blocks over time, but it's concrete that tastes sweet and provides calories. Smash it with a hammer, dissolve it in water, whatever. It's still sugar. It's still refusing to die. And honey, nature's middle finger to decay. Bees figured out immortality before we did. Low pH, low water content, antibiotics. Archaeologists found 3,000-year-old honey in Egyptian tombs that was still edible. The pharaohs are dust, but their honey, still golden, still mocking death itself. The science is beautiful in its brutality. These three create environments so hostile to life, with water activity levels so low and pH levels that could strip paint that even bacteria pack up and leave. Next, carbohydrate immortality. Method one, white rice. Not brown rice that hippie garbage expires faster than good intentions. White rice had its soul removed in processing, and that's exactly why it survives. Scavenge it from Asian markets or anywhere civilization stockpiled carbs. The whiter, the better. Those natural oils that make brown rice healthy, they're also what makes it rot. Store it in mylar bags, those shiny space age pouches. Throw in oxygen absorbers, those little packets that eat air for breakfast. Seal it in five gallon buckets like you're preparing for nuclear winter, because you might be. Without oils, without moisture, rice becomes a carbohydrate mummy. 30 years later, it'll cook up the same as day one. Still calories, still keeping you alive. Step two in your carb fortress is pasta. Spaghetti, macaroni, those weird shell things. Durham wheat processed into shapes that mock the concept of expiration. Raid Italian restaurants or grocery stores. Look for the hardest varieties, the ones that could double as construction materials. Same storage method as rice. Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, sealed containers create an environment so sterile that bacteria would need hazmat suits to survive. The low moisture content in pasta makes it a desert for microorganisms. They arrive, find nothing to drink, and die of thirst. 20 years from now, when you're boiling this pasta over a fire made from furniture, it'll taste exactly like it did before the collapse. Which is to say, like cardboard, but cardboard that fills your stomach and keeps you breathing another day. Finally, protein that refuses to quit. Canned meat. Chicken, beef, pork, mystery meat that might have been an animal once. The canning process is basically food mummification. Hunt through abandoned stores, military surplus, look for cans without dents, bulges, or that ominous hissing sound that means botulism is throwing a party inside. Your nose is your best friend here. If it smells like death, it probably is. The science is medieval in its effectiveness. High heat kills everything that wants to kill you. Airtight seals keep new threats out. 
No oxygen means no spoilage, just protein suspended in time waiting for your can opener. That can opener isn't just a tool, it's a key. A key to another day, another meal, another sunrise. You're not just stockpiling food, you're stockpiling time. You're building a fortress against oblivion, one can, one grain, one crystal of salt. This isn't about hoping you'll survive, it's about ensuring you will. Let's continue with the next food, dried beans, the prepper's best friend. This is your third method for long-term survival. We're talking kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans, beans that look like tiny rocks and, let's be honest, taste about the same. But these are rocks that provide protein, fiber, and the sheer will to live another day. Scavenge them from health food stores, Mexican markets, anywhere people understood that beans are basically edible insurance policies. You want the hardest, driest specimens, the ones that sound like gravel when you shake the container. The storage is the same protocol we always use. Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, sealed containers. You are creating a tomb so perfect that even time gets confused and leaves it alone. Properly dried beans have a moisture content lower than most deserts. Any bacteria that show up find absolutely nothing to sustain them, and they give up, just like everyone else will. The cellular structure of these things is a fortress. Thick cell walls, minimal water, natural compounds that tell microorganisms to find somewhere else to party. 30 years from now, they'll still cook up into something resembling food. Next, canned fruits and vegetables, vitamins in armor. This is for when you desperately need vitamins and your body is threatening to develop scurvy. Think peaches, corn, green beans, tomatoes that have a distant memory of what sunlight felt like. The same canning science that preserves meat works here. High heat sterilization, airtight seals, an environment more hostile than a tax audit. Those best buy dates, they're just gentle suggestions from a world that believed in expiration dates. Ignore them, trust the science. Yeah, the texture might be mushy, the color might be questionable, but vitamins are vitamins and scurvy is still scurvy. Your body does not care if the peaches have the consistency of baby food, it cares about not falling apart at the cellular level. For your mornings, rolled out the breakfast of the apocalypse. Start your day with old-fashioned oatmeal that's older than your grandparents' marriage and twice as reliable. Find them in bulk bins, health stores, anywhere people stockpile breakfast before breakfast became a luxury. You're looking for the thick, hearty varieties, the kind that could double as construction adhesive if you needed to. Same storage protocol, mylar, oxygen absorbers, sealed containers. You are creating a breakfast bunker that time itself cannot penetrate. Oats are just grass seeds that learn to be useful, low moisture, high fiber, and stubborn enough to survive a nuclear winter. The natural oils are minimal. What little moisture exists gets vacuumed up by your oxygen absorbers. What you're left with is basically edible cardboard that provides sustained energy and, more importantly, the illusion of civilization. Now for when you miss the concept of dairy, powdered milk, dairy's ghost. Let's be clear, it's not milk. It's the memory of milk preserved in powdered form like cremated calcium. Scavenge it from restaurant supplies or camping stores. Look for a whole milk powder if you can find it. More fat content means more calories, which means more reasons to keep breathing. Store it like everything else, but be extra paranoid about moisture. Powdered milk and humidity are mortal enemies. One drop of water and your dairy powder becomes dairy concrete. Keep it drier than your sense of humor. 20 years from now, you'll mix it with whatever water you can find. It won't taste like milk. It'll taste like disappointment with a side of calcium. But your bones will thank you, assuming you still have bones. Method four for immortal condiments, vinegar, the acid that never dies. White vinegar, apple cider vinegar, vinegar that could strip rust and probably has. Acetic acid doesn't just preserve food, it is preservation. Find it anywhere people understood that acid kills everything worth killing. The pH level is so low that bacteria take one look and file for unemployment. Store it in glass containers if you can. Plastic might dissolve before the vinegar expires. We're talking a pH of 2.4. That's battery acid territory. That's dissolve a penny acidic. 
use it for cleaning, preserving other foods, or just reminding yourself what flavor used to taste like. And its opposite, baking soda, the alkaline survivor, sodium bicarbonate. It doesn't just survive, it actively fights decay, odors, and the general concept of things going bad. Stockpile it from anywhere people baked or cleaned. Store it in airtight containers because it will absorb every odor and a 50-mile radius if you let it. Use it for baking, cleaning, deodorizing, or as an antacid when your stomach finally rebels against your survival diet. It's pure chemistry in a box, and chemistry doesn't expire, it just waits for you to need it. There you have it. These are the essentials that laugh at expiration dates, mock the concept of spoilage, and will keep you alive when everything else has given up. Store them right. Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, sealed containers, in cool, dry places that bacteria fear to tread. The science is simple. You remove the water, you remove the oxygen, you remove all hope for microorganisms. What you're left with is food that's more stubborn than you are, more persistent than cockroaches, and a hell of a lot more reliable than any government promises. Now you know.